Welcome to the Career Change Podcast, where you'll discover the frank and practical advice and resources that are already proven to work in the real world when it comes to changing careers or figuring out what business is right for you when you are a smart but likely also stuck, overwhelmed or overthinking person in your mid-30s, your 40s, your mid-50s. I'm your host, Ricky Hansen, a career change advisor, entrepreneur and former corporate HR professional with over 15 years experience of helping thousands of people just like you identify or create careers or businesses that are both meaningful and future-proof. Welcome home. Hey, it's Ricky Hansen here and welcome to episode 20 of the Career Change Podcast. Let's talk about networking, yes, and more specifically, let's talk about networking for career changers and new entrepreneurs in their 30s, their 40s, and their 50s. And rather than just give you a bunch of hacks or tips and then wish you got good luck implementing them, let's really establish a new baseline first for you. Like in this particular episode, I really want to help you change the very definition of networking and hence help you change how you think about networking and more importantly, how you actually feel whilst you're doing it in a way that's going to make you feel like doing it. And why do I want to do that? Well, here's something that I've noticed again and again, and this might be true for you as well. Many otherwise smart and sociable people, they feel exceptionally uncomfortable (laughs) when it comes to networking. Or like a client of mine said to me recently, Ricky, I'd literally rather do anything else but network, including dental work and loads of other dodgy things. It just, he was like, it just makes me feel so sleazy. Or I often get emails from clients. I literally just got one a couple of weeks ago. Actually, that was from a subscriber who said, Ricky, even just logging into LinkedIn gives me the shivers and makes me break out in hives. So let me be really frank. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. I totally get if that's how you feel too about networking. It makes you feel sleazy, you don't like it, you'd rather do anything else. So let me tell you the good news right up front. What I recommend is not like the old school traditional networking, because actually traditional old school networking doesn't tend to be very effective anyway, especially if you are a career changer or a new entrepreneur over 35. Can I get a sigh of relief from you? I promise you no more sleaze or clammy encounters. Let's only do what's really worthwhile, okay? So keep listening because here is the kicker and what I want to make sure that you are aware of so you can actually make networking work for you. Done right networking, I can promise you, is one of the tools that can fast track your transition into a new career or into your own business faster and more powerfully and more enjoyably than almost anything else. However, only when done correctly. Because let's let's get honest about this, because what I what you probably noticed is that the kind of networking you might have been doing up until now, it's not working for you and you don't feel comfortable doing it. Honestly, I totally get that. So when I first started my own business, my career transition consultancy back in 2005, I used to do the old school style networking too. And very quickly, I realized that I did not enjoy that, nor did it get me the results that I wanted. And I tell you, it wasn't my cup of tea. And I'm I'm an extreme, as you can probably tell, I'm an extreme extrovert. I love meeting people. But most of that old school networking, it just didn't appeal to me. And like I said, it also didn't get me the results that I wanted. So why should I waste my time? And I've also... I've always been very protective of my career change clients, of my entrepreneurial clients. And I can, I've totally seen over the last 15 years how traditional networking did not make them happy either. So I've literally spent years developing and testing on real people, so real results in the real world, and teaching networking approaches specifically for career changers and new entrepreneurs over 35. So what I want to do in this episode is share some of the foundational principles that my clients have told me they found most empowering. And this is, like I said at the beginning of this episode, it's really first and foremost about how to think 
about networking and how to define it so that it works for you. So you can also try these ones on and you can fast track your transition too. And the good news is that my approach works whether you are an introvert or an extrovert. My client group tends to be split into sort of 50-50 introverts, extroverts. As long as you deep down actually like and respect other people, because that's key. Let's face it. If you don't like other people, I can't help you. (laughs) But as long as you deep down actually like and respect other people, then this approach will absolutely help you. And it's really key because opportunities come through other people to a very, very large extent in the career transition process. process. Nobody should be an isolated island when it comes to transitions. We need to build bridges. We need to set up routes to connect. And networking is literally the highway to a lot of what you want. All right? Let me tell you right up front the most important way or manner that I want you to think about networking in. Only connect with people you actually genuinely want to connect with. Let me say that again because it's so key. Only connect with people you actually genuinely want to connect with. I recommend only connecting and networking with people you actually want to connect with in the first place. That is the only way to feel truly authentic and non-sleazy around it. We really want to move away from this kind of traditional transactional networking towards focusing on building relationships. I mean, here's my big, you know, here's what I've really noticed. A lot of people, they approach or think they have to approach networking like a nightclub at 4 a.m., you know, purely transactional and short term and reeking of desperation. Let's leave that behind, my friend. (laughs) We never enjoy that anyway. (laughs) Let's leave that behind and instead focus on building genuine relationships you actually want to be in and can be yourself in. And it's going to stand the test of time. Doesn't that make you feel better already? All right. So let me give you three tips for how to do and more importantly, think about this, how to make networking work for you as a career changer, as an entrepreneur. Number one is to replace the word networking with building a new group of friends. Okay, so we want to redefine networking. And if you are a regular listener of the Career Change Podcast, you know that I often say that it is so important that you make sure that definition you have of important things, it empowers you and your transition. And here's the deal, everything is up for grabs. So let's choose a definition that's actually going to work for you, especially as we discussed already, old school networking. Let's leave that shizzle behind, okay? Number one, let's replace networking with building a new group of friends. Because here's the deal, what does a network really consist of anyway? It consists of people, right? And you have biology and history on your side because we humans, we are wired to connect. So use that natural trait to fast track your transition. Focus on connecting with real people you want to connect with. Leave behind the sleazy transactions on, you know, one-off favors. And remember, all you're really doing here, let's not complicate things. All you're really doing here is just connecting with people. Connecting with people you truly want to connect with. And here's another thing that I've worked really well that I encourage my clients to do. Really focus on people who could also double as friends, like make friends. And I'm not necessarily talking about best buddies or soulmates, but ideally they're somewhere positive on the friendship potential scale. You know, everything from collaborators to joint venture partners to Facebook group friends, etc. People you actually want with you as companions, whether they're near or far, on this amazing journey called life. So much of what life is about is who we share this with, okay? And now you are moving from one career or one job towards another or your own business. So you should actually want to build a new group of friends in your new field. That's one of the beautiful things that I've definitely noticed and a lot of my friends have noticed. One of the most beautiful things about the career change journey, the entrepreneurship journey, are the new friends you make. They're just, why would you not want to do that, right? So forget about traditional networking. What you need to do as a career changer or as a new entrepreneur is to build a new group of friends who can help you with your transition or with your new business because they are already well plugged into the arena you want to get into too. 
So what we're going to be doing now is just to go out there and you're going to make friends. And the key here is especially to make friends who are already well plugged into the arena you want to enter into. Plugged into means they're well connected. They have a great net, great network themselves. And also they actually want to be there. They like what they do. Those are the people you want to focus on. So move away <laughs> from this transactional one night stand, 4 a.m. nightclub mindset towards building and nourishing longer term relationships. And don't delay, get started now on this journey, okay? So just a reminder, number one is to replace networking with building a new group of friends. Number two, and this is key, number two is to network like a career changer or network like an entrepreneur, not like someone who hates their job. Let me say that again. It's key that you network like a career changer or an entrepreneur, not like someone who hates their job. So here's what I mean by that. If you are in a job right now that you don't enjoy, or if you are in a professional industry that you really do not give a flying fart about, or if you still haven't decided what you want instead, then probably the kind of networking you've done so far or doing right now has probably felt or is feeling really embarrassing or uncomfortable or sleazy, like you did not want to be there. But what I want you to do is take a moment and just see how much of your resistance or definition of networking is actually directly connected to the experiences you've had in that very profession that you so badly want to leave behind, right? Like a client of mine, <clears throat> I literally spoke to recently about this. He was like, oh, I don't want to do networking. He still literally had flashbacks to, he was an accountant, to a bunch of tax accountants in stiff polyester suits, you know, poking at each other with business cards, like, a, you know, that scene out of American Psycho. None of them really wanted to be there. They all hated their jobs and their bosses. And they all knew they were just at these kind of events. So they could hopefully find a job they would just hate a little bit less, but they probably didn't want it anyway. Ugh, sleazy, horrible, embarrassing, didn't want to be there. But let me remind you of something absolutely vital. If you are wanting to change careers or to start your own business, I am hoping it's because you are actually wanting to move into a line of work or a profession or an industry where you truly have an interest in the subject, right? You are passionate about it or you are highly interested in it. You want to talk about it. You want to know everything you can about it, i.e. you actually give a fuck about it, all right? And you should therefore want to connect with other people in that world. Those are the only people you should want to connect with and make friends with in that new world. So remember, you're not asking someone to give you a job you hate or ask them to become your client or give you money now. You're not going to ask or talk about a subject of a profession that you don't care about or that you have no interest in. Instead, you are now going in to make friends in the industry you want to move into or build a business in. You're connecting with people you truly want to connect with and make friends with. And that's the difference. Remember, now you are only going to look for people who have that non-sleazy, passionate interest in common with you, that new thing that you love. That is what you connect around, my friend. Nothing to be embarrassed about, right? And that's really the amazing thing when you find the right career, the right business for you. You want to connect around it. You want to make friends in it. You know, you, you, it's, and also what's so great, then it's not just about you. The focus is not just on you. It becomes about the interest, the subject, the industry, the client group. That's what you connect around. So it sort of shifts the light away from you and makes it so much easier. Now, if you right now are at the stage that you haven't yet decided what the career or the business that you want to move into next to start is, then I do want to let you know that I do have a program that will help you nail down what the best career change and business options are for you. It's called your career change map. If you want to know more about that, then come over to thecareerchangepodcast.com and ask me about it. All right. Now, but that's really number two, which is network like a career changer or entrepreneur, not like someone who hates their job. Look forward, my friend. That's really what this networking approach is about. It's about networking for that thing you really want, care about, are interested in. All right? Number three is to use the 3.57 degrees of separation to find and connect with your new friends. 
So number three, I'll repeat, that is to use the 3.57 degrees of separation to find and connect with your new friends. So here's what I mean by that. It has never, ever been easier to identify, connect, and collaborate with those friends you just haven't met yet. You are literally only 3.57 degrees of separation away from many of them. Those new potential friends and super connectors who are already loving and well-plugged into and well-connected in the field you want to enter into next. And here's what's so amazing, what I love about the time we live in now. You've really chosen the right time to make a change because thanks to the internet and more specifically social media sites and niche online groups, it has never ever been easier than right now to identify and then connect with those new friends, no matter what's happening in the world. Because the great thing is that a lot of this is actually happening online as well. And here's what I mean by the 3.57 degrees of separations. Do you remember when you and I grew up We always heard about this thing about six degrees of separation between you and the person you want to get in touch with. However, since the introduction of the internet and especially social media and networking sites, that's actually recognized as having brought that degree of separation down to four degrees of separation. Gets even better. A study sponsored by Facebook in 2016 shows that on a social media community level, niche level, that number actually goes down to 3.57 degrees of separations. I mean, hello, why would you not want to tap into this to fast track and empower your transition? Why would you want to make it harder for yourself? This is something I often notice with very smart people. They just have this tendency to make things so much harder for themselves and being almost toxically self-sufficient. I'm raising my own hand here, but you can absolutely change that. Why not tap in to the fact that you live in a moment in time where it's never, ever been easier to bypass the gatekeepers and go straight to the network that's going to help you. And here's also, I've even seen numbers from Twitter research that shows that on a niche level, that number even goes down to two degrees of separation. You could literally just be two degrees away from a key collaborator, champion, new friend. Just think about that. That's really one of the biggest shifts that I've seen happening as a career change advisor with my clients in, in over the last decade. And increasingly also now, especially after COVID, and, and, and one of the things COVID did was so many things moved online and so many networks and that were harder to get into before are now literally open to the public online when you know where to look. You would really be crazy not to tap into that. And I really want to mention something here about the importance of community and niche level when it comes to really getting way closer to those new friends. The more specific you can be about what you want to do next and who with, the easier it's going to be using the right tools to identify and connect with your new friends who are also going to double as a network to really make your career change happen. So get specific I'm really big on this with my clients when I work with them, because just think about this for a moment. Once you get clear about what you actually want to do, and you're really niching down in terms of the specific service offering or specialty or client group or industry niche, then you are going to be much easier able to connect with and identify the most amazing network, the most amazing friends out there who are already in that similar industry, similar business, similar career, so you can reach out and collaborate right? Who you can start following, interacting with, looking at what events are going on, what kind of things can you start tapping into. So get specific and don't be afraid of niching down in order to make finding these connections easier. This is something I often see when people decide to start a business. They're almost like afraid of niching down. But here's the thing, the more you niche down, the easier, the more specific you are in terms of what you do and who you do it with, the easier it's going to be, first of all, for people to understand what you actually do and for you to actually find the kind of people who are in that niche. And I'm so big on doing this, especially with my private clients when I work with them. That is so key. So as an example, let's say that, that right now, you are an accountant and or a lawyer, whatever it is that you are, and you really want to transition into advising on healthy eating. You want to build a business around healthy eating, healthy living. Now, the sooner, you know, that's really, really broad, but the sooner you can niche down 
And it doesn't mean you kind of broaden out later, but the sooner you can niche down and get specific as to what kind of healthy eating that actually is, let's say gluten-free or paleo, or what kind of client group you want to work with, let's say menopausal women or teenagers suffering from eating disorders, the easier it's going to be to find and start connecting with the right kind of people, be around them, make friends with them. And the sooner your career change is going to take off, the sooner your business is going to take off. That is especially key for those of you who want to start your own business, but it's also really key for those of you who might just want to change job or profession, because the more specific you can be, the more people can actually help you. People, you know, networking is is so key for you. And also, like I mentioned briefly earlier, one of the biggest joys that I that I've definitely had in my own life, and I can see in my clients' lives as well, who've changed careers and started their business, one of the biggest benefits and and often surprising benefits and joys is that you really find that once you do work that's a lot more aligned to who you are, what you care about, your values, what you're good at, the kind of people you therefore meet, and that's something that you actively should take a part in, that it's just incredible the kind of people who get you, who are just like you, that those kind of people, that network, those friends That is so much of the joy of work that you're going to be finding once you tap into this. I cannot tell you how many of my best friends, actually, I have met purely because of what I do for a living. So tap into it, my friend. All right. Now, I trust that you are already feeling way more empowered and fired up now than you did before you hit play on this podcast today. And that's really my aim with everything I do through the Career Change Podcast. So, Whether this is your first podcast or you've been gobbling all of them up, I love all of you. So if you're really enjoying this show and you would like it to continue, then please take a moment right after having listened to this and leave a glowing review over on Apple iTunes. It would really mean the world to me and would also help a lot more people just like you and I discover the show. All right, so please do that. Now here's the deal. Be yourself. Get out there and connect with people you truly want to connect with because you have a non-sleazy, non-embarrassing passion, interest, or subject in common that you can connect around. Remember, it's never been easier than now. It's no longer six degrees of separation. We are down to four and even 3.57 and two degrees of separations, depending on how niched and community level you get. Why would you not want to benefit from that kind of an amazing tool? So get out there and make friends. Connect with people you actually want to connect with and watch your transition take off. Doesn't that just sound so much more doable, realistic and exciting? And also, I'll leave you with this. Don't ever forget this fact. As humans, we are wired to connect. It's natural. Make it work for you. All right? I'll see you over at the careerchangepodcast.com for more. Thank you so much for listening.